Hi everybody, happy Saturday. Hope you're doing well, having a great weekend. Um, let's see here. We just had a new moon pass. Um, I mentioned this because I went to a new moon sound bath. And if anyone has the opportunity to go to one of these, I would highly recommend it. Um, Basically, the, the sounds were made by bulls, singing bulls, and um, shakers, and like wind chimes, and gongs. And gongs are absolutely amazing instruments. Um, they produce such complex tones like so so the tones are so rich there were times that i was listening and i was like this sounds just like a symphony just in and of itself this gong um and it was just a really great experience um and i say all this to kind of lead into the fact that it's made me think about how i hear music in a different way and um, less quote unquote right and wrong and more just these are sounds these sounds may work for you they may not work for you but they're sounds and the more sounds that we're able to hear and process the richer our music and are experiencing other music, other people's music, the more, the more rich that experience will be. Um, so some of the chords today are going to be a little bit, um, dissonant. Some are going to be a little bit consonant, but it's just all about being aware of possibilities and just having them in your in in your arsenal being able to pull them out and use them as the uh, as the situation um calls for so bringing it back to the lesson today last week we had looked at c and g in the bass e and b in the treble and then just taking half step intervals and the treble up and just kind of hearing what chords sounded like. Two perfect fifths, obviously the C and G in the bass, and like I said, the E and B in the uh, treble that we started with. Um, not, not really worrying about, you know, what exactly the chord was, but playing it first and then naming it, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so just being comfortable with like, how does this perfect sound again? Ugh, excuse me. How does this perfect fifth sound against this perfect fifth. A squeaky pedal, sorry. And in our exploration of sound and music, one of the things that is very beneficial is to just turn the coin over. What is the flip side of the coin? So if we've got C, G, E, B, what would it sound like if we had E, B, C, G, right? Now I've already talked a whole bunch about how these are different sounds and why they're different sounds, but I just wanted to explore that specific progression with the C and the G and the treble and the E and the B in the bass. So let's just hear how that sounds first of all. So there's a lot of beauty in there, obviously a lot of movement because we're just moving up by half steps and our ears lock into that. You know, like I've explained in past videos before, humans just like patterns. It's what's helped us evolve. Um, 
So when we recognize a pattern, we're like, I like this. It's comfortable. It makes sense to me. Um, so let's kind of break this down a little bit. We've got E and B in the bass, C, G in the treble. So if this was just E, B, and G, that'd be a simple E minor triad, right? But this C is really kind of throwing us off. So technically this C is gonna be the minor sixth. So it's an E minor triad with a, with, or excuse me, flat six. E minor triad with a flat six. That's what I would technically call this. But here how close this seemingly dissonant chord is to gaining much more consonants just by moving this C down a half step. So here's the E minor flat six chord versus just an E minor chord. Right? I mean, even, even that's just kind of like nice. Tension and release. Very tense, and then release it. All right, so we got an E minor flat six chord. Let's move on to the next one, F, C, C, G. This is just, to me, um, like a F, it's just, I would just say the notes, they're F, C, and G. It's kind of like a F, F5 add two, I guess. Um, and then it's F and the C, so that's F5. And then add two is this G. Sometimes um, twos or nines are heard as suspensions, um, meaning that this note wants to resolve down to this note, right? So we call it suspended. And the fact that we've already got this C in here, an octave lower, it's not any new information for us, so to speak. Let's keep going. So we got F sharp, C sharp, which is very tense. And it's very tense because our fifths are a half step away um, from F sharp to G and from C sharp to C. Mm, I would just call this an F sharp, uh, sharp five, flat nine. Um, but usually if it's something, if it's a chord like that, you'll say this is specifically how I want this chord played because if you just write F sharp um, sharp 11 uh, flat 9 it could get voiced even more awkwardly than this is <laughs> so um, there's that chord and that's one of those chords that even if you even if we switched our hands right hand and left hand and just switched them Still, still pretty dissonant. So let's keep going. G, D, C, G. This is, this is getting back to suspensions. This is a G sus chord. And it's a sus chord because uh, sus is just assumed that whenever we say that, it's a fourth instead of a third. If it was a third, it would just be a G major triad very consonant but it's a sus chord so it's instead of a b we've got a c g d c g let's keep going up a flat e flat c g beautiful major seventh chord we've talked about those not that one specifically but that is most definitely a major seventh chord let's keep going a c oh, excuse me a e c g that's an a minor seven chord Again, we've talked about that. Let's keep going some more. B flat, F, C, G. Very nice chord. We, we talked about this, but in a different iteration of the chord. Um, and this is just a, this is a B flat, I would say add six, add nine. Um, sixth being G, nine being C. So it's B flat, F, which is just one five. There's the nine right there, C, and there's the six right there, um, G. Let's do one more chord, B, F sharp, C, G. It's also very um, 
very dissonant because the, the, the fifths are a half step away. So let's see here. If we're going to call this, we should call it a B. It's got the fifth. It's got a sharp, or excuse me, a, a um, <clears throat> flat nine. And it has got a, what is that? A uh, flat six. No, excuse me. That's just a, yeah, that's a flat six. Sorry. Flat nine, flat six. B flat nine, flat six. And then we go C, G, C, G, and we're home again. Let's listen to it just one more time. Now that's a nice progression in and of itself. Uh, maybe a little bit, um, a little bit too much to use that whole progression as it is. But there are some chords in there that are very suitable. And like I like I said at the very beginning of this lesson, it's all about um, finding possibilities. What chords can I make up with two separate perfect fifths? Don't think about names. Don't think about letters. Don't think about any of that yet. We can, you can come back to that later if you want to. But this is just about playing two perfect fifths on the piano and saying, how do those two perfect fifths sound together? Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope maybe that helps you think about music, hear music, in maybe a way that you hadn't before, which is kind of what it's all about is to just experience it from as many different angles as you can. Um, if anybody wants to take some private lessons, I would love to do some theory, music production, whatever, whatever you're interested in. Um, I offer a hundred back. I offer a money back, 100 back guarantee. <laughs> and I offer to stumble over my words a lot because Sometimes uh, my brain goes faster than my mouth. So I hope this was helpful. I hope to see you next Saturday at 5 p.m. And um, have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you later.